Season 7, Episode 14, Fame and Misfortune. It doesn't go unnoticed, it's not lost on me that this was an episode lined up with BronyCon. <laughs> the episode about uh, people's, uh, you know, criticisms of the series is lined up with a big con. Uh, which... Oddly enough, we'll be uh, criticizing. <laughs> it's very meta. So, uh, you know how we've, you know, Twilight when she becomes a princess, she she sings the, you know, you know, you'll play your part. That song, you know, she's complaining about, you know, I, you know, is, you know, Celestia's son, Luna's. The moon. Cadence does the Crystal Empire. It's like, okay, well, she does friendship. I'm like, okay, well, you're actually kind of doing your princess thing. This is kind of what we hired you for. <laughs> it's um, like, wait, I get paid? And so, well, I imagine she's got some sort of stipend. Given that she's True. Royalty, you know. Um, however small it would be. I mean, she's constantly saving Equestria, so, I mean, mm -hmm. throw a few bits here and there. Frankly, that she doesn't have a guard retinue I, is a little strange as it is. Though, you know, it's like, yeah, from from a political perspective, I mean, Celestia Luna, they have royal guards. Crystal Empire, they have royal well, I mean guards. But she could friendship. have a sensory. Yeah, that's always the joke. If you know, she did get guards, like Cadence being the shipper on deck would send. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a good guard. And, you know, it's like, well, there's a fan fiction that writes itself. It's like, oh, you know, and I imagine it's been done half a dozen times. You know, Celestia tells her that you need to get a guard, at least one. She doesn't really want one, but she's like, you have to get at least one. You know due to some security problem, you know. And it's like, okay. Uh Kate it's like at the same meeting he's like, okay, well, um, I've got one for you. You'll fit in just fine. Won't be a problem. And then that's where the shipping goes and off. But I digress. And this new flashlight. Yes. Uh so she's helping two fillies bury the hatchet after they fling ice cream at each other. One of these flings actually uh, knocking a stallion's plate out of the way and replacing it with a sundae. Yeah, They're that's where I got cut out. Perfectly formed. Not a bit out of place. And it's just like, it's like, all right. Where are they getting these all this food to fight with? Um, also, I think it was a Tula Rula, I think was the one that had different colors for her mane and her tail. It was very weird. It's very unusual. Um, so at this point, uh, you know, she says a phrase that she said before, that's appeared before in the series. It's like, wait a second. And, uh, so she goes to her library and pulls out the old friendship journal which somehow in the short time between then and now has gotten somehow you know dusty and smelly the, the smell will explain later but the uh, the dust and the old and the age on it are less explicable also how did it survive the golden oaks incident uh, you're, cut, you're cutting out really badly and then i 
I can barely hear you. You're, you're cutting out like crazy. And asked, the library wasn't completely annihilated. Annihilated. Yeah. Okay, that last bit, that last sentence actually got through all right. Yeah, there may have been a corner where it was, where it was stashed and it, it managed to avoid getting the direct blast and somehow survived. But, you know, it was incredible luck because most of the rest of it was completely destroyed. Which makes you wonder what they've done with it now considering they pulled up, the root pulled it up by the roots. So now there's just this big gap in the middle of the city where the library used to be. All right, so... Uh, and, uh, what? Where they... I'm getting about half of what you say. <laughs> it's where they bury all the dead bodies now. Ah, okay. Um, so each of the main six has a weird thing tucked in there. AJ put in a smushed apple, which explains the smell somewhat. Fluttershy writes far too small. Rarity writes in too fine of a purple calligraphy. Dash writes so hard. She made the paper look like Swiss cheese. And Pinkie Pie inserted mini party cannons in hers. So it explains the wild appearance of the book. The flawed appearance of the book. So, uh, so Starlight makes perfect copies of the book for the six. A skill she learned copying a certain manifesto a communist manifesto uh -huh. it's Karl Marx and spelled like Kitty Marx anyway um so Twilight then suggests making the book available to the public and the books go like hotcakes. Um, the two from the start come back and they begin to fight as Twy is giving copies out to all the foals at the uh, at the schoolhouse. Um, and she points to one of the lessons of the books to help. Apparently, also, uh, thanks to the books, so an unintended and not the main goal of the book kind of a side thing that happens is uh, the CMC are now going to have a summer cutie mark camp because they have now have interest because it worked for their marketing um, so Twilight's going back through town and a group comes down from Philadelphia to get an, just get an autograph but didn't actually read the book they just wanted it as a keepsake which ruins the whole point of having the book <laughs> it's like read it you know n know what it is or, you know, at least have two and read one of them if you're going to do that to it you know have a well well-worn red one that you use and use the other one for a keepsake if you're going to do that um let's see Ch -ch -ch -ch. Another unwanted side effect, uh, Twilight overhears a conversation about the book and criticism of Rarity like a gossip rag. Uh, Rarity runs off and Twilight chases after Rarity and then as she's trying to catch up to her, Pinky tiggers her. <laughs> uh, initially Pinky does love the attention, but when they laugh at everything she says, regardless if it's funny or not, it starts to annoy her. You know, you've known me for years. You know, they, 
they do what some people do and what bad Pinkie Pie episodes do, and they flanderize her as not serious. Um, like, she's, she's not sincere, she's not serious, she's not, you know, she doesn't have any depth to her. Also, an interesting note is that uh, the book blows the lid off Daring Do as a real alter ego for the author. Um, that little secret's out of the out of the bag. Any thoughts up until now, Alex? Um. Well, this episode, I just want to say, proved to be the Brony Phantom in a nutshell. <laughs> Yeah, there, this is definitely... It was not lost on me that this was done BronyCon weekend. It's like, yeah, these aren't perfect. There's flaws, but... It's kind of a... Yeah, we're not going to be perfect. But to a point, criticism is useful so long as it's constructive criticism. Yeah. If you're saying, well, I don't like this, but you don't say what way would be better... You know, you're just complaining, you know, and, and, you know, if you don't take time to get to understand the characters, you know, and you don't have a reasonable expectation for them, you know, you're making complaints that aren't really, that really shouldn't be made. Um, and, you know, some of the overbearingness of the fandom sometimes comes through in this as well, because we get, uh, Dash can't get a moment's peace for fans, and the foals aren't appreciating all of the lessons. They're just like, Dash is cool, we're just gonna read those. It's a bit of careful what you wish for. Though, mm -hmm. arguably, she probably does already have fans as part of the Wonderbolts, but we haven't had her deal much with fans, though. I mean, we saw bits in, um, in the episode with her parents, but... They were always at some big signing or something like that. They were never, you know, her running into fans on the street and that sort of thing. Which imagine with as exclusive as the Wonderbolts are, that, you know, there's not that many Wonderbolts. Those, at any given time, the Wonderbolts aren't a great number of ponies so if you would know if you were a fan you would know all of them and if they saw one before saw one pop up before you that would be a thing I guess unless you lived in the town and it's like well I already know her so yeah. um, and this is one then we get into one of the biggest I think one of the biggest missteps that some fan, some in the fandom make I consider it mis misstep. Some people may disagree with me, and that's fine. But, and I, I, I actually do agree with their criticism of the criticism. Uh, Fluttershy is surrounded by fans who wonder why uh, the assertiveness lesson for Fluttershy had to be learned over and over. You know, she's, you know, you know why does she have to keep, you know, learning the same sort of assertiveness, you know, speak up for yourself sort of thing over and over again. And she handles herself with a plum and, and charges back at them with, have you ever learned something one time and changed who you were? At that point, they don't know how to feel. Because they're not, she's not, she's nothing like the, the Fluttershy in the book. It's like, okay, if we, if she, you know, on one side, you have the people who are like, she always does the same lesson, assertiveness. But on the other side, is, well, if she's too assertive, she's not really Fluttershy anymore. You know, she's not, you know, she's not, that's not her. She's out of character. And so it's one of those moments where she's kind of, you know, darned if you do, darned if you don't sort of thing. If she learns the lesson becomes assertive, then oh, well, she's not the same character I fell in love with. You know. And if she doesn't, well, you're just repeating the same lesson over and over again. So, I, either way, you know. 
um, we find out that uh, some, when they are stressed, they eat. Some. Top of the rack, I'm guessing. What? Yeah, you're back. Some, when they're stressed, uh, you know, they, they go for a jog. When Rarity is stressed, she. She sews. faints on the couch. Well, she sews. Apparently, uh, she's been getting cancellations, and Pony's been boycotting her for some reason over the book. Which seems really odd, but. Okay. While this is all going down, AJ comes in harried and requests the hunter blankets. She's popular and she doesn't like it one bit. Apparently a group called the Sweet Apple Admirers show up and ask to be treated like family. And they take advantage of the Apple's hospitality. Um, we get the, the exchange of Twilight, your, your journal entries? Apple check. Yeah, you know all the stuff about how friends are like family and whatnot. Twilight, can you get rid of them? And kick out my own family? Granny Smith, hang on, let me help. And there's a sweet Apple admirer that says, there she is. Um, this, of the of the groups of, of the different things uh, that have happened with these characters in this episode, the kind of critiques of critiques, I think this is the least reasonable of the reactions i can see where they get it but i think they pushed it a little too far to the extreme ag does love her family and she'll bend over backwards for them but i think she has way more backbone than this yes she, she's she's a people pleaser as they, they we talk about later but with strangers and this sort of thing I don't think she would have, you know, it, it. You needed something to stress her out, and it would be really hard to stress her out. And if you did what I think she would have done, it really, it would have, it would have kind of dropped the tension uh, instead of escalating the tension. Um, she has. She she's also somewhat. She's a she's a sales pony. I mean. Art of the dress, you know, you know, you know, Apple takes more, she's more in uh, something or other, she's more in, more concerned with sales. So I wouldn't be surprised if she turned, she had turned it into tourism, into a cash cow, had, had figured a way to organize things so as to, you know, help out the family and make a donation, you know. You know, help you know, help us out and make a donation, or you know, while you're here, buy some apples and that sort of thing. I think she's more clever than that. Buy some apples. Buy some apples. Buy some apples. Essentially, buy some yeah. apples. She would have she would have turned this into a business opportunity. I think. I think she's a lot more clever in that way than you know, she would have found a way to to make it work. I don't think she, she's to people. She's a a pony pleaser, but she's also, I think she's got a little more backbone than that. And she can actually be quite stubborn at times, if she wants to be. Which is an odd, interesting dichotomy, is she gets some of her flaws come from her being too stubborn and some from her being too eager to please. Too worried about pleasing others. Um... Uh, apparently, Twilight does the, the window staring thing so often that in universe it's understood that when Twilight's sitting over there looking out the window staring, something is wrong. Something is desperately wrong. If some, if she's going out and she's doing that. Because um, so, Starlight immediately picks up on it and says, Oh, you're staring out, staring out the window that bad, huh? <laughs> or something to that effect. At which point Twilight regrets making the book. She's hard on herself about it, having made um, life hard on her friends. Uh, at this point, the girls retreat to the safety of the castle. And they are all balls of stress. 
Uh, we get some um, we get some interesting interaction between Twilight and the crowd outside. Uh, a pony called Pearly Stitch. Twilight was better before she got wings. Now, it's also noteworthy in this episode that M.A. Larson was the original source of this episode's concept. So, <laughs> you can imagine why that one was shoved in there. Uh, what about mm -hmm. or whoever picked it up later and <clears throat> developed the concept? You get wings. You get wings. Everybody gets wings. <laughs> Hot or mild. Anyway, um, though for for as much as you know, Bill deride it. He, you know, Twilight was the only one who got wings, so he, they've only added you know, Cadence and her, and that's they've stopped at that point. Well, Rarity it's, at one point too. Well, full on Alicorn status has only been granted to outside of Celestia Luna and Cadence. Twilight season and McFlurry. Oh yeah, McFlurry. Now that I think about it, yeah, they've they've really expanded that. Now that I think about it, yeah. Um, and Prince of Big Mac. That was a dream sequence. It doesn't count, <laughs> but it was awesome. Princess Big Mac. Mac. It was. Uh, anyway. Um, and there's this great little bit of subtle animation that's well, not so subtle, but at the criticism uh, where Lemon Chiffon says, Fluttershy is just so painfully shy. It's hard to relate. I mean, come on. At which point, a Fluttershy fan off to the right, I think the right side of the screen, you know, kind of slinks away. This is the difference between those that get Fluttershy's character from their own experience and those that don't. Those that understand her shyness and her you know, uncomfortableness with the, you know, kind of social situations and pressure and that sort of thing. <laughs> and those that are like the extroverts, essentially. The, the big extroverts. Like, oh, she's just so shy. What's wrong with her? No, there's nothing wrong with her. She's just shy. Though people conflate, I'm kind of conflating here, introvert and shy, but I think she's both. She's both an introvert and happens to be kind of shy. Um, you can be an introvert and not shy, just need to recharge your batteries by your lonesome. But I digress. So at this point, the crowd whips up into a frenzied swirl of arguments. And apparently Bon Bon is an AJ fan. <laughs> and Lyra doesn't seem to have picked a side. She's just there for her friend. And then we get oh. into the uh, the song. I think Bon Bon has a different voice in this. Ah, uh, she doesn't speak. She's just in the background. Ah. Um, it's just it's one of those ones where, yes, that's a very common. <laughs> background pony and we know a bit about her from uh, Slice of Life so it's big. she's a big enough character that we I should mention her if she shows up with something um, so then we get the, the flawless song uh, let's see now they basically say the first little bits of it is you know, yes, we're flawed characters. We have quirks. We've got dents. We've got uh, well, the exact line is uh, we the chorus is we're not flawless. We're a work in progress. We've got dents and we've got quirks, but it's our flaws that make us work. Uh, yeah, we're not flawless. We're a work in progress. So tell me what flaws you got too. Because I still like what's flawed about you. Okay, and then we get into some some character bits. Some of them I want to analyze more than others. Um, Dash, you know, her her little bit is they say I'm a big shot that my ego is the size of a whale, which it is. 
<laughs> my confidence comes off as cocky, but it gives me the courage to fail. Um, she 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 boosts herself with being outwardly confident and cocky to cover for her own insecurity, because she's cocky and confident outwardly. It helps her to you know, I can do this. It, she's cheering herself on. Uh, and then Rarity comes in. Sure, I can be a drama queen. A bit stuck up, it's true. Oh, no, Rarity, you're never a drama queen. Yeah. They're flaws, yeah, I'd say that. Those are, those are reasonable flaws for Rarity. Um, she can be a bit detail-oriented. Um, but that's also a bonus in other realms and other ideas. Applejack comes in and uh, and I can be too eager to please, which at first I didn't really think too eager to please, but then I started thinking about about episodes, her her big episodes, and you start looking at it and go, yeah, kinda. Uh, you got the last round up. Okay, she goes to the the um, uh, the rodeo and try to make money and for the to keep her promise to to help rebuild the uh, the main kind of hall thing in the middle of town. Uh, fame and misfortune, you know, she's helping, you know, helping. Uh, she's doing all the being a doormat kind of for those people apple buck season she's doing way more than she can actually do uh, you know because she feels like she, she's she's got to do it apple family reunion she goes way too deep in trying to make the reunion perfect race is born race is born one two three four and you got Hearthbreakers. She's she's really trying to make things nice for the pies. She's she goes about it the wrong way, but she does do it. Um, she does try and do it. Uh, Pinky Apple Pie. She you know she's trying to make the the trip look you know make the apples look good to Pinky. Um, though occasionally um, she doesn't. Like in Honest Apple, like she's she's not trying to be easy to eager to please in that regard. She's being kind of brutally honest, which takes us to our second line of this, of her little stanza. I know I'm taking a long time with this, but I think it, it's a more interesting bit of this song. Uh, There's such thing as being too honest, too, because, and then it goes back into the chorus. Oddly enough, despite her element. Dash is probably the more brutally honest of the group. AJ isn't a big liar. You know, she's not a liar. She's not, you know. She, but she usually has a way of telling someone the truth without being harmfully blunt. There are exceptions, yeah. like Honest Apple, but she's mostly, if you're talking about somebody being brutally honest, it's usually Dash, which is why people always say, well, those two should swap elements. Uh, but then we go back to the chorus, and we're not flaws, we're a work in progress. We got dents and we got quirks, but it's our flaws that make us work. And it's a good song. Um, then we get to Pinkie Pie's bit. Ponies think I'm all bubbles and laughter, that I don't seem sincere. At this point, she, she's psychoanalyzing herself. She, she's she's got one vision version of her is on you know in a kind of a you know I think it was wing back chair is looked very psychotherapist sort of thing and she's on a on the on the therapy couch you know talking about it and then uh, she comes with I, I might joke around a little too much but I'm just so happy you're here. So yeah, she's 
the really good episodes for Pinkie Pie are ones where you can take you can you can say yeah she's funny she's obviously she's a funny pony she's she loves making others laugh and whatnot but that's not all of her character and there are some really good episodes that show her the really good Pinkie Pie episodes while they may have her being funny her making jokes and such but they always show that she's deeper she's what you see on the surface is you know the tip of the iceberg yeah she's she's funny she makes jokes but there's something much deeper much more methodical much more interesting underneath the surface like um uh when she's uh when they find out she's got the kind of the pinky cave where she's kept all the 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 facts on everything she's super organized and has all these interesting things and you know the you know the moments where she's not happy i mean where she's not bubbly she's she's you know she's sincere and she's interesting and you know also like in uh her kind of middle of the road way of dealing with the kind of stresses and problems was she was a middle way between spike and twilight in uh it was a, it's about time you know she twilight's super freaked out about the future and is just super stressed out and such and spike doesn't really put any thought to the future pinky doesn't stress about it but she prepares for it you know she stashes you know things all over equestria in case of a something emergency you know that's you know those are the good episodes Um, so, in Fluttershy, round us out with, it took me a while to be confident, to really come out of my shell, which is, you know, it, that's basically all her lines, she only gets two lines in this entire, in this song, because it leads right into, uh, right in back into almost the entirely the the chorus but that's why it then says but nobody ha no pony has to be perfect by now does she know us so well because yeah and then we're not flawless blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I mean, it, it is a funny bit of uh visual it's a good visual they have her actually quite literally coming out of a shell yeah um, a seashell it's a it's a good image But it's a good song. Um, it's more or less accurate on basically everything, I think. Um, and it, it gives some interesting times to, to look at characters and <clears throat> what is the core of this character? Is this true about this character? Is this the true flaw? Uh, the thing I want to talk about, uh, I think I, I mentioned it, I just want to make sure I mention it, is I find it interesting that AJ's flaw, she basically has two major flaws, are kind of the uh, almost to the point of being almost opposite of each other. They can coexist, but in certain situations. But her two flaws are being stubborn and being a people pleaser or pony pleaser. She, she does have a stubborn streak, and that sometimes those that stubborn streak and that kind of interact sometimes, but. Anyway, anything up to now, anybody? Because I've been kind of ruling the conversation here. Any, any thoughts, Alex? Or... Uh, I mean, yeah. as far as it makes sense, I mean, with Flutter, <coughs> with Fluttershy, of course, it won't just like, oh, one episode go by, I learned how to uh, not be shy anymore. Let's, uh, I'm completely changed. Yeah. But I mean, if you look at it now, like 
from her first episode, she was like super shy, but now she's like a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, if you look at like an episode, early episode, like Dragon Shy, she was literally afraid of her own shadow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and now she's not only, you know, she's, she's, that whole moment of her standing up to them and saying, have you ever learned something, learned how to be, you know, get over one of your flaws in a single time, you know, her, her speaking with such confidence and aplomb shows how much she's grown right there. She's nowhere near what she used to be. Is she, you know, perfectly confident and, you know, da, da, da? No. But she shouldn't be. Because that yeah. would be, that would be too unrealistic the other way. Is she better than she used to be? Yes, absolutely. I think she's improved dramatically in her mm -hmm. confidence. Is she perfect in that? Does she still get nervous sometimes? Does she still get kind of, I want to crawl back up in my shell moments? Yes. But and what they're is, not as often and they're not as strong as they used to be. And that's good. Yeah. And what is Starlight Glimmer doing in all this? She's mostly been trying to keep the other ponies sane. Um, she, she, she was staying when, when Twilight left Rarities to go see Applejack. She stayed with Rarity to try and keep her sane. Yeah. She's basically, <clears throat> she's trying to play therapist to all of these... Uh, to the main six. Um, she's trying. Now, she's trying to be helpful to Twilight. It's like, don't, don't. You're beating yourself up too much about this. It's them that are wrong, you know. And you know, talking to Rarity, trying to keep her calm, and you know, it's just he's trying to keep the whole place, keep them from kind of shaking themselves apart. Now, did they just give these books away for free, or did they sell them? Yeah, that's a. It's a. It's not really well covered. Yeah. The fact that they're in shops seems to imply that they're sold. Maybe they mm -hmm. sold some and gave away others. Like they they gave away copies to the the foals at the schoolhouse, but they sold copies elsewhere. Like, when are you gonna make a sequel? <laughs> yeah, that's gonna take a while. <laughs> To recollect a whole bunch of more. That's going to take a few more seasons before we're ready to put out a sequel, a yep. supplementary edition. This Season is the second 14. edition of the friendship, you know, friendship second edition by T Sparkle. Good. <laughs> Good. What were you saying? I didn't... Uh, so just made the joke. I said season fourteen. <laughs> yeah, we we'll take season fourteen. Is uh. This is Friendship Lessons, second edition. Authors T. Sparkle, <laughs> Princess, and then you got some ponies. Like, um, I did not give you permission to have me in your story. I want compensation. <laughs> yeah, there's that aspect to think of too, but it's one of those points where it's like, yes, let's just hoof wave this. This whole business is just. Just hoof wave it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that would be too much. It gets in the way of what good we can do with this episode is stifled by this. And so, you know, Twilight after is like, so you see every pony? None of us ever claimed to be perfect. Without our flaws, there wouldn't be any friendship lessons to learn. Without our flaws, there probably wouldn't be any friendships at all. Even though she's given a song and a speech, which usually fixes everything, um, the crowd goes right back to fighting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is a yeah, and it, it's a microcosm of a kind of it's a reflection. <laughs> they can say whatever they want; the fans are still gonna fight. But it's like, listen to me, I am your god. You will stop fighting right now. <laughs> Yeah, she. I think she spent some time with Luna at some point, and Luna taught her yeah. the Royal Canterlot voice. It's like, yes. 
and apparently that's so baked in that even today the royal Cantalot voice uh, it's still effective <laughs> <laughs> um, at this point Starlight brings in the two fillies from earlier they actually learn from what the book had to teach uh, and then uh, okay and then we kind of get our final scene Twilight's like Oh, I can't tell you how much it means to hear that. Thank you for telling us. We've had a tough couple of days. But knowing we've helped fillies like you, Alpjack replies, it makes everything we've been through worth it. Rarities. Absolutely. Fads come and go. Friendship is forever. And Dash, there are worse things than not being able to do anything without being told I'm awesome. And Fluttershy, and we can't change the way other ponies think about us, but we can change how we let it affect us. And Peepie, or how we don't let it affect us. And you know, it's like, no, that's okay. That that was that was supposed to be funny. And apparently, they eventually deal with the situation off screen. And that's the end of the episode. Which it's interesting that it took until now for them to be kind of household names. And it's like these. Ponies saved the world multiple times. One is a princess, and you're just now noticing them? I it's mean, like, eh. They've noticed Twilight a couple times. But you'd think these ponies would be hugely famous, given all the, you know, kind of end-of-the-world level threats they've dealt with. You know. Yeah, but I think every pony's just used to that. Yeah, well, in mean, Ponyville, I don't think that would be too big of a problem because they've kn again, like Pinky said, you've known me for years. You know. Yes, but now you're famous. So now we gotta laugh at whatever you say, no matter if it's funny or not. I I broke my leg. Ha 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 ha. I'm in excruciating pain. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. Overall, some of the criticisms I think are well leveled. Um, some of them, I don't. Know, some of them, eh, but uh, I think this was also kind of a, you know, appreciate our side of the story a little bit here, uh, fans, and you know. Don't get so caught up in criticism. Though, just said that I probably spent about 40 minutes talking about and critiquing this episode. <laughs> it's going to be one of the longer reviews, despite being it kind of, you know, but I, I'm being kind of positive and kind of explanatory as to expanding on this and whatnot. So I don't think I fall into that group. And I kind of understand where they're coming from for most of this um the fillies were improving the two little fillies were that was important because that helped kind of ground the episode of you have all these people all these ponies just they're completely taking it the wrong way but this this you know the people the ponies it's supposed to help you know something you know you know these ponies that need the help are getting it because they have the book and so it's it's interesting, and I wonder if they'll ever... I mean, generally, episodic stuff like this, this will never come up again. The book will never come up again. The, you know, all the hullabaloo about it will probably never come up again. I haven't looked forward to any of the other the descriptions or anything, but I've got a feeling that this is going to be like... It's going to be like The Simpsons kind of thing, where, yes... They were massively famous, but now nobody knows who they are. <laughs> but you just put that episode. It's the end of the episode. Everything resets. What? <laughs> yeah, end of episode. Everything resets. Yep, books <laughs> have been taken off the shelves. <laughs> They're now out of print. But and there's also an interesting. Uh, aspect of the uh, of Starlight's spell 
If you're a unicorn and you like books, that's got to kill the book industry. Because if you, if anybody, if any unicorn can get that spell work, I mean, again, most, like they've said in uh, uh, Showstoppers that, you know, most unicorns can only do a certain type of magic that's <clears throat> lined up with their talent. But if Pony's got a hold of this, uh, this yeah, spell and learned how to do it, they could just like, oh, I'm going to check something out from the library, make a copy of it, and then I'm going <laughs> to, and then I'm going to return it. And then yeah, I will I think, have all the books. Uh, I think the um, books might have like uh, spell protections against that very thing. Could be. I and mean, that wouldn't surprise me. Like In a magical copyright. world, they wouldn't take precautions against, you know, copying. I mean, besides though, the only library in Ponyville was destroyed. Well, Twilight got a new, got a new one set up, so you get that going for him. But uh, and it also may just be one of those spells that just it's very it requires somebody with some strong magic to begin with, and you have to know it. And it's a rather obscure spell as it is, and so. You know, the the whole thing is rather. It's not as big a deal because, no, only, you know, Starlight would be the only one, probably in all of Ponyville that would know about it, because it may just be an arcane and unusual spell that nobody knows. It's been kind of suppressed as a forbidden text for that reason. Um. But, yeah, I think overall it was good. I liked Flawless. The The song was nice. Though, you know, yeah, it was nice. I'll, I'll go with that. Um, oh, so what, what did Spike do in the episode? Oh, Spike is Flawless, so we don't really need to talk about him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> And I don't know that he ever wrote in the in the journal, so the spike was more of a background character in the show. I mean, yeah, he said. was he was just back there doing uh, doing spike things. I I'm time. surprised he wasn't like, why? Yes, I do know the main six. Yeah, that could have been a thread that they could have pulled. I think in this episode, uh, Starlight, in a way, kind of takes over from what Spike would normally do, being kind of the reassuring voice and such, and, you know, like a, a rock for her, which is odd that they, they I guess it's, it's hard to fit, squeeze two characters into that same kind of supportive role. Starlight's trying to be supportive, and Spike, if he was there, would also be supportive. Yeah. They have this problem of a lot of times where it's either Starlight or Spike helping. You know, like, where'd Spike go? Mm. He was reading comics the whole time. Or, uh, you know, where's Starlight on this? Um, she's studying some lesson. Mm. But with so many characters to juggle, okay, whatever. <laughs> and it's really hard to squeeze again two characters into that same support role and it not get kind of cramped. But that's my basic thoughts on it. It was an okay episode. And again, I have critiqued the episode about critiquing for longer than probably a lot of the other critiques I have done. Any final thoughts from either of you? Nope. Nope. All right, then. 